Mindfulness is actually designed to help with all of these problems that I've just outlined. It's designed to help us see and accept things as they are, to lose our preoccupation with self, so that the story of our life stops being the story about me with, where I'm the star. To actually experience the richness of the moment, since our lives are made up of a series of moments. And to become free to act skillfully out of this. Now, to develop mindfulness, we do what are called mindfulness practices. And here's an analogy. We can understand this through analogy with physical fitness. And we'll talk about this analogy at other times also today. If you wanted to develop physical fitness, physical fitness is strength, endurance, and flexibility. In order to develop physical fitness, we do things like calisthenics, work out at the gym, go for bike rides, that kind of thing. Mindfulness is awareness of present experience with acceptance. In order to develop or cultivate mindfulness, we do mindfulness practices. There's a lot of misconceptions about these practices because many of them are imported from Asian traditions. Just to clear up a few. It's not about having a blank mind. Uh, there's uh, John kabat who some of you know, was leading a retreat, a meditation retreat, and a participant brought him a Bazooka Joe comic, the kind that comes in bubblegum. And in the comic, there's Joe sitting in full lotus posture and his sidekick, Mort. And Joe is saying, since I have discovered meditation, my mind has become a complete blank. And Mort says, gee, Joe, I thought you were born that way. It's not about losing our capacity for higher cortical functioning. It's not even about getting the chatter to stop. Rather, it's about having some flexibility as to whether we're only attending to the thought stream, only living in the narrative about our lives, or actually attending to other aspects of experience as well. It's not about becoming emotionless. Most people are drawn to these practices because they want to get rid of some feeling. I don't know about you, but in my life experience, typically when people enter psychotherapy or take up a new spiritual practice or some, some such self-improvement program, they're not doing it because they've just fallen in love, gotten a raise, and won the lottery. right? People tend to do this when they've fallen upon difficult times with painful emotions, and their fantasy is, I'll get rid of the painful emotion by doing this. It actually doesn't work that way. These practices actually help us to open to and be with, in a much fuller way, painful emotions for the goal of alleviating suffering, and we'll talk more about this a little bit later, but they don't make the painful emotions go away. They're not about withdrawing from life, even though they've been refined by monks and hermits and nuns. They're not about seeking bliss, and they're not even about escaping pain. Now, some of you may want to walk out and get a new, go to another seminar at this point, but trust me, these things are actually of use, nonetheless. So let's do a little bit of practice together. Because mindfulness is something that one can talk about, but it is through the careful observation of the mind that we really get insight into how it works and insight into how we can begin to cultivate the mind to actually be in the present and step out of the thought stream. So what I'd like you to do 